try it after this spot. Okay, we'll continue the press conference with the uh, members of the West champions. From here left to what left to right, number 24, Hagen Danner. Next to Hagen is number 25, Nick Prado. Next to Nick is number 20, Braden Salzman. And we've got manager Jeff Prado. Questions? Nick, Nick what was that pitch? What did you see on that pitch? What were you looking for on that last step out and what happened? I was I was ahead in the count and I was just looking for a good pitch to hit to drive and I got that pitch. Better. What did that feel like? I ask you, how's it, how does it sound to be Little League World Series champions? That's not very good. It's just a dream. Like, it's just a dream come true. I, I never thought of that. I never thought that we would be like in that spot and just ending up winning it. Um, Braden, can you um, talk about? Did you feel the pressure league, out there? Uh, did you? Little League World Series nightly to the podium. I, I felt no pressure because because um, it's a championship game in the Little League World Series. So you were nervous. Yeah, kind of. How long did it take to get rid of that? Um, after like the first inning. Coach, what do you have to say about your pitcher? Oh, he's. I, I keep I keep saying I've said it maybe three times. He pitched, you know, the greatest game of his life, and I've said that like I think I said it once in sectional, and then once in subdivisionals, and now again. So, you know, he was the right guy for the job today. Um, a pitcher that's uh, very efficient, uh, able to change speeds, able to hit a spot when needed, and that's what you have to do to to beat Japan. Um, uh, you know, it was very complementary to their style of play. So, you know, he went beyond his call of duty today and, and locked it down. Wait, how long did you sleep last night? Oh, I slept pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the whole surprisingly so the team went to bed pretty darn early last night. We have our nights. I mean, some nights it's a chore, but actually uh, last night it was pretty pretty quiet. When you guys woke up this morning, did you think you'd play today? You yeah. saw the rain I, and stuff I, like that. I thought, I, was gonna, I thought we were going to play. I thought we were going to play, but just waited. I thought we were going to play. The personnel <laughs> here were very confident that this morning. <laughs> well, they called it right on the nose. So they must have been monitored very closely. Jeff, what does this mean to you to co and to coach your son and to, to have this experience with him? Oh, I, I don't know yet. I mean, it's just kind of sinking in. It's, you know, it's my last game coaching, so now I'll just be a, a, a dad and a spectator. So, um, which is, you know, going to be kind of cool. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't want me to go throw him batting practice every day of the week. So I still, uh, you know, I still have to keep the old arm going, but uh, maybe just less frequently. And Nick, what's it like having your dad to have, what do you think it's like having this experience with your dad? Oh, it's great, but it kind of gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, as many balls, probably hundreds of thousands of you have thrown to your son, and in that situation where pop out, you're going one more inning, base hit, the World Series champ, can you kind of take us what was going through your heart and your mind? I was, you know, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a clutch kind of hitter. We have a couple of those on the team. And I just thought back to Red Bluff. I thought back to our, uh, our game that got us here. And it needed a clutch hit. And, you know, uh, he was there. It set the table. Uh, uh, Braden actually set the table. You got the, did you get a walk that inning? That was the key. We had a lot, uh, seven, eight, nine coming up. I knew that if we got one of them on, we're going to be in pretty good shape. As long as we could get to the top of the order, and I think we got two of them on, so um, uh, it worked out great. Guys, how does it feel to be? I don't know if you guys know the history of this, but no Orange County team has ever won the Little League World Series. When you guys think about the history of the baseball in Orange County, how does that make you feel to hear that? And is this the first you've heard that? Well, the baseball in Orange County, like, because we play travel ball and all the teams are, or there's, there's uh, teams in there and they're really good. So I thought that there's been, like, Orange County teams. But then when I was looking at the pictures and stuff, I noticed that we, that there's no one. So we're the first uh, team to win it. We have no idea. 
notice, like, through the teams we've played, that we've recognized players that we've played against in travel ball. So, we, we, we mostly did that. I think Orange County teams, they, they, they beat up on each other pretty badly and, and mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> in their uh, sectionals and, and everything. So, it's a pretty tough ball down there. And when you come out of it, then you hope you make it a little way. So. Each of you guys, can you just talk about your nerves as the game went on? Did you, did you feel the tenseness, the tension of the game, or what, did it become just like another game? I, I felt the tension. Like in the last inning, there's bases loaded, and then uh, Braden, and there's a ground ball to first base, and they threw it home, and then there's two outs. I was on second base, like hoping that you'd come through and meet it. Oh, I felt it. When I came up to the play, I was just thinking, oh god, oh god. And then once I got in the box, I just started to calm down, get my head straight, see the ball. I felt it. <laughs> yeah, for me, it was, you know, I was pacing back and forth, thinking back to that play, the error, you know, the, the throw where it was, you know, Nick threw it to third, but there was no guy there. And I'm thinking, God, if we didn't make, if we didn't make that throw, we win a one nothing game in six, you know, because of Hagen's homer. So I'm pacing back and forth thinking, you know, you can't, I have to do it quietly because I don't want the team to know that that's what I'm thinking about, but I just kept thinking about that. Jeff, you said yesterday that this was a no-pressure game, you know, yeah. what changed? Uh, <coughs> probably when your sons want to throw it away, you know. It was a half-half. Our, our shortstop didn't get to third and cover the base, but then I then when he got up to the plate, I said, this is, you know, in my head, I'm thinking it's a chance to redeem yourself and, you know, obviously that happened. How did you guys evaluate your coaches dancing pregame with the mascot? Oh, oh, that was really great. That's 10 tons of fun there. It was pretty fun. We've got some moves. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, maybe I, I think Doug out saw me lurking in the shadows too long and she finally, I don't know if it's she or he. Does anyone know if it's Doug out uh, finally got me. You talked about you were like, oh God, oh God, and then you get in the box. Did you feel you needed to take a pitch to kind of settle down to, to see one, or, or take us through the mindset? Um, when I got in the box, I just saw, I just thought, see it, drive it. Just If I see anything I can hit, just swing, swing hard, and just drive through the ball. If that's a common baseball philosophy, was it hard to have that in this situation where you see it, drive it, your World Series chance? It works. <laughs> is that a situation you've played in your head before, just like goofing around with your friends or whatever, kind of oh, like yeah. the bottom yeah. of the night oh, and everything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do it. Me and him used to joke around like when we were like seven watching it. Mm -hmm. And Hagen, what did you hit the home run off of and just what, what yeah. did that feel like? It was, well, felt great and it came off the back of the day. It was a curveball. He hung in a little bit, but it was a little outside and I. I had a feeling that curveball was coming because my last at bat, and I, they, he threw me for first pitch fastball, and then he threw me curveball right after that. And so on the cur or when I swung in the first pitch, and I called it off, I knew a curveball was coming the next pitch, and I just waved back in it. Coach, how much did it help to get the momentum right back on to get oh. even right away after the bat? It was uh, yeah, that was vital to get that right back quickly, and you know basically. Uh, you know, Tony, I think that was in the third inning, and Tony even said, okay, get, <clears throat> he said it then, he said, guys, okay, it's a three-inning ball game, it's 0-0, it's zero, zero. we're going to play three innings, so, and, uh, you know, that's where uh, Braden's efficiency comes in, because he was able to get, uh, you know, through six innings, even though we made, well, two errors, and, you know, then there was kind of a miscue over there on a on a coverage where the second baseman didn't get it right. I'd call that an error, even though it wasn't marked as an error. But those things that probably cost him twelve pitches, probably twelve, thirteen pitches. So if you think about that, he could have gone a whole other inning. So. Have you guys thought about what, uh, what kind of reception you had to get me to go home? We don't get to go home. No. Where are you going? Cooperstown. Then where are you going? <laughs> yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, there's, they had a tournament scheduled a year ago to go there, and it just happened to be next week, so 
you know, whatever's waiting at the airport, if there's anything waiting at the airport, and this, that, and the other, you know, they'll just have to, they'll have to postpone the, the gratification. All three of you. Brandon will show them what, <laughs> he'll tell them what, what's there, right? How many, how many of you guys have, how many of you guys are staying? Uh, there's just three that are driving up to Cooperstown. Yeah, Anthony Martinez also. But Brayden, you're going home? So you can celebrate for everybody back home? Yeah. <laughs> I think you're going to first class pizza in Fountain Valley, California, aren't you? <laughs> I think so. So, hey, can Nick, you guys walk into Cooperstown next week with a target on your back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this your travel team that's going up there? Or is it yeah, travel. travel. Have either of you been to Cooperstown? I've been when I was six because my brother played there. You guys all you do this process of kind of been like really relaxed and this isn't a big deal, we're taking it one game. Now that you're through it, are you guys willing to admit that this is a big deal and that, that this is so yeah. special? There you go. Who started the dog pile at the end? He, he was on the bottom. I don't know. <laughs> how, did, how did that feel? Claustrophobic. Yeah. <laughs> Will it be any less fun in Cooperstown next week without the cameraman and us talking to you afterwards? Yeah, a little bit. This is fun for you guys? Yeah. You know, because a lot of the major leaguers don't always enjoy this. Sucks for them. <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are some of the things that you guys are going to take with you guys out of this? Some of the specific memories outside of today? Uh, talking to the other teams, like the international teams. Like, what was that like? Oh, it was great. Could you talk to the Japanese guys? Do they speak English? Yeah, but I was only saying Kanichiwa. Because <laughs> we had Rio Takada on our team, and he could speak to oh, the Japanese okay. kids, and then Christian Kitano could speak to like the Latin American Mexico kids. And Jose. Yeah, I know. So we had it all covered. We don't. We can't speak. Well, Aruba speaks English. You can't speak English. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what do you think you guys will do tonight? Do you have plans? Do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Play ping pong. Uh, you're not tired of that. Yet? I'm sure the families are going to get together and do something. Uh, oh, we're going to. I don't know. Or Steve's room. Steve's room at the Hampton. One of the two. I'm not sure what's going on. Do you think you guys will stay friends forever? Is this the kind of thing that? Will... Yeah. And Brayden, do you have that hat from the first game? Do you, you say that? It's the last. What are, for you guys too, um, what are what some of the specific memories that you'll take with you? Um, getting back to me when you're about 12 and 11. Probably just hanging out with all the different like states and countries. Oh, getting to, getting to sign autographs is at the stage pretty cool. Mm -hmm. How many autographs have you guys signed? I don't know. A lot. A lot? More than we can count. What was the most, can you each give us your most fun moment of this experience? I think we know what yeah, next is, but <laughs> yeah. Probably, I don't know, just, this whole thing was just a blast. I, there's nothing really like that pops out in my mind that was the most fun. Well, winning this whole thing. Pitching the championship game. <clears throat> the other day, Brayden, you said when you when you were on the mound that you were shaking yeah. with nerves and stuff. Were, were you that level of nervous today, or was it not as bad? No, it wasn't. It wasn't as bad. Like I wasn't like really like shaking. Mm -hmm. you, you were able to pitch four times too while you were here. Did that? You think that helped you that you're able to kind of go through the process more than once and, and really be. Maybe the most comfortable I've had out of everybody out there. Yeah. The Japanese manager was said he it was hard waiting through the rain and playing on the wet field and stuff. Did you guys get were you bothered by that at all in no. early conditions? No. 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 I think no. California kids wouldn't be used to the cleats. What weather? Well, well we play it year round, so we're kinda of used to it. Like there's one part of the year when that usually happens yeah. also. In this tournament, that you were kind of known as I, probably every TV station in America showed you shots where you got hit in the hat. Is that uh, something you like, you don't like? Uh, well, I like getting the, all of the attention. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 okay, Steve. Jeff, how do you
did you keep them as the rain just game times kept changing and the uncertainty of whether uh, we were going to be playing? Well, they told us early yesterday. They told us yesterday pretty pretty early that it was moved to three. So yeah, it was pretty close to three. I don't know what time did the game start? Three thirty. Three thirty. So you know we were right on schedule, and you know they're a pretty loose bunch. They were, you know, we had to get down there, you know, about two, and they're. Towel snapping each other in the locker room on the room at about 1.50, you know, getting their uniforms on. That's just the way this bunch rolls. I mean, you know, our, our uncles, our, our, you know, our chaperones, they said, I've never seen a team that doesn't practice as, as, practice as little as you guys, you know. And, yeah, I mean, it, you know, uh, we, we hit every day, but, you know, we get three or four field practices just to keep sharp. If you don't have it by now. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> we're not going to go through hitting 101 at this point. It's either you, you do it or you don't. So.